um, how, how the world is in a mess, absolutely in a mess tonight. And the answer, and the answer from the Word of God. Uh, look at Ephesians chapter 2 tonight, and I will begin reading with verse number 11. In chapter number 2 and verse number 11. Wherefore, remember, see what the Bible says? That ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, as before we got saved, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time, before you got saved, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of the promise, a promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's the shape the world's in tonight. No hope. But now, verse 13 says, In Christ Jesus ye who were sometimes are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For He is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in Himself of twain one new man, so make Him peace." and that He might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Alright, I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to talk about the, the Bible said there in that verse that the world, the world tonight has no hope. No hope. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is no hope. They, uh, uh, they're trying now to tell you, tell us that the best hope we've got is to be healthy and live longer. That's, that's what they're trying to tell us. That's what you're on TV, you hear uh, in the environmentalists, the health channels. I'll, I got one of them health channels on my, uh, I have a Sky Angel and I have a bunch of channels. One of them is a health channel and sometimes I watch it and I want to turn it on because I don't want to hear all the bad stuff I'm eating wrong. And, uh, and, I, and I turn it on anyway and listen to it, just torture myself. And they're all in there saying, you need to have this, and your cardiovascular needs to work right, and this needs to work right, and that needs to work right, and this, and they have a vitamin for every single, I mean, heart function, immune system, everything. I take vitamins. I take, I take vitamin C and ester E and ester C and, and, and all that. And I believe in that stuff, but brother, I'm telling you, uh, you're still going to get old and die sometime. You can't cheat it. I've cheated it a long time. You can't cheat it forever. Something's going to get us all one of these days. And then what? Uh, I, I pray every day. When I pray, when I run every morning at the top of my driveway, just like a ritual, I stop top of my driveway and I bow my head and I say, Dear God, touch my body. If I've got any diseases in me, heal me from head to toe. I, you say, Well, I pray for my heart. You, you look at all the stuff you can't even, you don't even know what it is. I just pray for everything. Uh, head to toe, heal me. Lord, touch me and and make my, my, keep my body strong, and then I go run. I don't know what else to do. But even then, even then, healthiest person in the world, I mean, something's going to get you. going to get you. So what's our hope? You know what the world's hope is? I was preaching about it down there in Alabama the other night. The world come out with this thing a few years ago. And what they're going to do, well, it's a long time ago now, so it's probably more than that now, for 50000 bucks, you can pay. And they sign... Scientists in this research center, when you die, before you start rotting, and but I think a lot of people start rotting before they die. Uh, but uh, uh, they, they, some of them was at Bible school. And, but uh, it, but you know, before you start rotting, they will they will take your body down to wherever they, one of these clinics and put you in a deep deep freeze and freeze you. Freeze you just like you'd freeze some hamburger meat so it won't run or something like that and freeze you. And then they're going to put you in this capsule, time capsule, and a bunch of people in there and shoot it in outer space and just let it orbit the earth. You know, because there ain't no, there's no air can get to you. You can't rot and leave you up there for 20 years or 25 years. And whenever they figure out what killed you, like if it's a heart attack, if it was a stroke, cancer, or whatever, then they're going to bring you back down here, put a new heart in you, thaw you out, and hook the jump needles up to you, jump you off, and you'll get to live again. Now, I guess if you was, if you was 
40 or 50 or 60 or 70. You'd still have that body. But if for $50,000 and people actually standing in line, standing waiting in line in order to pay that $50,000, say, well, listen, that's all the hope they've got. That's the best hope the world has. Think about that. I mean, you so used to think about heaven, we don't realize that the world don't have no hope. The best hope they've got is stay healthy as long as I can and then maybe die quick and not suffer. That's the best hope they've got. We've got the hope of heaven and we are, we don't, I don't even know what it's like to have that mentality of nothing past the grave. I believe heaven and hell all my life. Even before I got saved, I knew there's something beyond the grave. The world tonight thinks that when you die, that's it. And that explains why they live like they live. They think to get all you can get, step on everybody you can step on to get it, have all the fun you can have, because life's short and you're going to die soon, so live it up while you've got to change. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Now, you know what? I, don't, I wouldn't give them no $50,000 shoot me up there and one of them. How do you know they're even going to bring you back? I mean, there'll be so many people in 25 years, they're, not, they're, they're going to say, ah. Leave him up there. He'll never know the difference. <laughs> I mean, he's dead and gone. We got too many people here need these new hearts. They ain't going to bring you back down here and thaw you out and let you live again. They'll say, I'm fully on you. Uh, you can just stay up there. Let, that, let the thing go on out in the forever and ever and ever. Um, wouldn't that be something to them people to out their bodies out there in outer space when the judgment day comes? Uh, their soul's going to come out of hell and their body's going to come out of that capsule. And stand in front of God to be judged. That's a wild thing. Uh, but the world tonight has no hope. This world is sin sick. Um, uh, they say that in the National Council of Churches, in the National Council of Churches, which we are not in, uh, by the way, National Council of Churches is a big organization of liberal, big denominational churches it, that has a lot of different denominations in it. One half of the preachers in the National Council so churches do not believe in the deity of Christ. They don't even believe Christ was God. The preachers, one half, one fourth, do not believe in the miracles of the Bible. And 62% of them, I think, don't believe in life after death. There is false Christ. This world is sick spiritually. The news pop it up everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, let me give you a quote from the Harvard Divinity School. This preacher is named Reverend Patricia. Uh, it's a, it's a, a woman, she's a preacher. And she says, quote, she says, We ought to celebrate Eve because Eve began the process of freedom. What she's saying is, we ought to really celebrate who Eve was because Eve rebelled against God and rebelled against her husband and started the process of freedom. Now, I'm going to tell you something, brother. Eve started a process. <laughs> But it was not freedom. More like slavery. Adam and Eve had it made. They was free to do anything in the garden. I, except eat that one tree. After they got out of there, they had a mess on their hands. So uh, that's what they say. Um, it's sick. The world's sick socially. Our homes. Nothing more. Nothing that I can think of is more heartbreaking than, than the, the, the breakdown of a home. I got a phone call one day. Last week, maybe Thursday, maybe maybe Wednesday or Thursday, about a week ago, a, f- a friend of mine whom I have known for several years, good good Christian family. I mean, you you would think solid as a rock. Good Christian family, loved each other, had a gang of younguns, Bible believing family. This family, I, I don't I don't, as far as I know, didn't even have a TV in the house. They were very strict to where their, their kids, what they let their kids do. Go, eat, wear, everything. I mean, they, they had some very strict rules. They made their kids go by. Uh, these kids were brought up to pass out tracts. They were brought up to believe the King James Bible. Everything. I mean, they did everything right. He called me last week. He said, Brother Danny, I got some bad news. My wife and I are getting divorced. I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, he said, oh, matter of fact, I think they're already divorced. He said, I need you to pray. I said, what in the world happened? He said, well, we just got into an argument over some things. And he said, mostly money. I said, neither one of you were, were you know, running around on the other. No, 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 no. He said, I wasn't cheating on her. She didn't cheat on me. We just fussed over money. That's one of the top three things people fuss over. 
is money, you know. Uh, and uh, they, they busted up, and he got mad and said some things. He had the cops come and arrest him for threatening an assault on her. Didn't touch her. Had him put in jail one night. He now has a record. He can't ever, ever own a gun. He can't, he can't uh, I mean, do nothing. All his kids are scattered. He said, kids are a mess. He said, the girls are with her. The boys won't, the boys won't speak. One boy won't speak to me. One girl won't come to see me. I, so that she's got them turned again. Just a big mess. Let me tell you something, brother. If you think your family, that that can't happen to you, you're kidding yourself. You need to guard your marriage and your family with everything you've got. And if you get in a fuss, for heaven's sake, get it worked out, forgive each other, put it under the blood, and go on for the glory of God. You husbands are bad for this. You're bad for having a fight and just ah, going off to work, and she sits there and steams all day long. And she don't get over that, and you have another one. She don't get over that, and you have another one. One day you're going to come in, there's going to be a note on the table, or it may not even be no note. I'm telling you, the devil is after our homes. The devil is after every single marriage in here. And he makes you, you can't keep your hands off each other before you get married. And then he just drives a wedge in between you and pushes you apart after you're married. He's out to get you. The world is sick. It's sick socially. It's heartbreaking. I know a good Christian family where the woman played the piano, sang specials in church. The man was a deacon, had two little boys. They get in a big fight in the house, throw things, cuss and holler and scream, and the little boys laying in there in the bed, just nervous, uh, listening to their mom and daddy fight. What's going to happen to them kids? That's sad. That's sad. You that are married in here tonight, determine in your heart, by the grace of God, I'm not going to let my marriage fail. I'm going to overcome obstacles, stick together, pray other. And, and it takes both of you. Just one can't do it. One person by themselves can't do it. It takes both of you constantly forgiving. Constantly forgiving. Constantly starting out with a clean slate. All the time. You know, you look at some people and you say, well, Boy, how'd they stay married all these years? Like Brother Russ Janey, and we had Roy Milley and, and that guy up here. how they stay married all them years? They learn how to forgive each other. You can't tell me they don't have differences. I'll guarantee you. Brother Ray, Miss Jane, I guarantee you, y'all differ on stuff, don't you? I seen them about claw each other's eyes out. Uh, but, but you know what they do? They learn how to get over it quick. Oh, that's just old Ray Ray. He's uh, he'll be all right. <laughs> and, and and he's so sweet. You know, he's like that little Pillsbury Doughboy. You know, he just he's sweet. And she learns how to forgive him, and they love each other. Other people don't. Don't they hold grudges? I don't know what you said. You said it last week. You said it last year. <laughs> I ain't forgot it either. You know, if some of you ladies could remember Scripture, if you do them hateful words your husband says, you'd be dangerous uh, for God. But you got to learn to let it go. Let it go, man. Let it go, lady. Let it go. Let it go. And don't, every time he does something, don't pull it back up and mow the head with it. You didn't let it go. Let it go. Let, let it go, fellas. If she says, look, I'm sorry, I've acted like a brat, I've been moody and I've been hateful, let it go. Let it go. The world sick socially. It's sick. It's sick. Um, they said one time Billy Graham, I think Billy Graham, one evangelist, went to this big city and he met with a mayor and everything. And he said, uh, he said, I wonder if you could get me a list of all the people in this town that have needs. And the man in the phone book... <laughs> Right. That's right. That's right, brother. There's the people that have needs. And not counting ones that ain't got phones. So, uh, I used to hear, used to hear stuff and think I couldn't hear nothing no worse. And then you do. Um, they had on that court TV about a year ago. I never forgot it. It stuck in my heart where this grandmother of about 70 years of age had been beat, beat to death with clubs and burned. Now, you'd think it'd take... I mean, a wicked, low-down criminal couldn't do that to a grandmother. I mean, the meanest man in prison, he wouldn't just go over and burn some old woman up and beat her in the head with, with a hammer, beat her with a hammer, crushed her skull in, and set the house on fire and burned that woman's body. You know who did it? 16-year-old granddaughter. 16 years old. And this girl was a lesbian. 
and she and her girlfriend would come to the house, or another another teenage girl, and there were 16... How does a girl get mixed up by 16 years of age? Hardened criminals in prison couldn't do that. And this grandmother said, I don't approve of this. You're not going to do this in the house. And them two girls got a hammer and set her on fire. 16-year-old girls. Now, I know you hear, oh, isn't that awful? But, I mean, think about that. Think about that. I'm going down the road the other night and in front of me, and I went, I went like that. And I hit, it went, boom, 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 boom. I felt it, boom, boom. I don't know. And all the way up the road, I went, oh, God, man, I hit a rabbit. And when I hit something like that, I just hope it kills it. Because I wouldn't want to, you know, just see it. Uh, you know, now, some people do stuff like that, but I can't stand it, man. I'm a, I'm a softy when it comes to stuff like that. I, I've heard of boys, old teenage boys, taking little puppies that was first born and playing baseball with them. Or pitching them, hitting them with a bat and stuff like that. Man, I think somebody's sick with something like that. I'm not an animal rights activist, but brother, I, I, can't, I don't want to hurt nothing. I mean, mosquito or something, you know. I ain't got no compassion on gnats and fleas and flies and stuff, but you know an animal that bleeds... You, you, you know, a dog just laying there. I come around the curve one time, and I was in a van, my van, and there was a big old dog. I mean, this dog, would look it was that big, just come running out. I didn't even have time to hit my brakes. I, I mean, it, and it just went, pow, bumper hit him like that. And I just went like that and looked in my rear mirror, and he was just laying like this, sliding down the road. He was That dog was sliding down. I'm like, oh, Lord, I hope he's dead. And, you know, because you hate for him to lay in the ditch a day or two like that and suffer, but... I cannot imagine killing another person. Even if it's somebody you hated. I might want to hurt them or see them suffer a little bit. But can you imagine hitting somebody in the head with a hammer? I'm telling you, man, them girls, them girls, what? There's something more wrong with them just being sinning. There's some demonic forces. It, that's not natural. That's not natural. That's the world tonight. You hear stuff like that all the time. This fella. I didn't. I didn't even seen the news today. Heard the news today. Uh, Wednesday's my day to pray and fast. And you know, on Wednesday, I didn't, didn't even turn my TV on. And I try to just try, you know, to try to give it to the Lord. And and uh, but if you've been following this, this dude that says he killed John Bonet, um, he's a funny looking fella. I'm telling you that. And whether he did or whether he did, that boy got problems. He, amen. I mean, if he didn't, he's got major problems for, because of what other stuff he's been into. And if he did, he's got major problems. They said if he did it, he's a sicko. And if he didn't do it, he's a wacko. So, I mean, he needs to be put somewhere either way. And uh, we'll, take a, we'll take a vote here and see who's... We'll find out here. How many believes he did it? Raise your hand. Okay, how many believes he didn't do it? Raise your hand. Mm, I don't know. Let's try that one more time. How many believes he did it? Raise your hand. I believe he did it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote that he did. Okay? How many believes he did not? Raise your hand. What did you say, Derek? You believe he did? Well, I don't know. I, th- I think, why would an idiot tell, say he killed him if he didn't? Well, that's a funny way to get attention. Because when he goes to prison, buddy, he's going to get some attention. They don't like child molesters in prison. Huh? Really? When they find that out? I hadn't heard that. Somebody else in there. Well, they showed his handwriting. Did you see that thing where they showed his handwriting? Every house? It looked, his handwriting really, really did look like that ransom note. But I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. I, I, every time they're pushing him through there with cameras, he walks like this. Like he's, I think, Lord, son, what's wrong with you? And he's got this stare on his face like he's demon-possessed. And I keep, some, I keep waiting on Jack Ruby or somebody to come around. Pow! Nail him right there, you know. But I guess they got a lot of security around him. Well, he admitted he's a criminal. <laughs> oh. Made him look like a criminal. 
Well, you heard what he got to do on the plane coming over here. Drink champagne and eat something, so I don't even know what it is. It's so fancy. I mean, it ain't caviar. It wasn't. I mean, it was so fancy. I don't even know what it was. Yeah. I don't think that'll work. Get all these criminals champagne to get them to talk. Uh, well, anyway, whether he did or whether he didn't, they, he's a nut either way. And I mean, there's plenty of people like that. And you know, I did not realize I'm. I did not realize that Thailand was such a hellhole until this. When all, Lord have mercy, we think it's bad here, brother. I'm telling you, they got kids in in, in, in prostitution at 10, 11 years old. I mean, everywhere, and I get. I don't know if it's legal, but they whatever. I mean, that's a that's a hellhole and a hype. And uh, this world is sick, folks. This world is sick. It's pitiful. It's uh, it's awful. Uh, uh, we we hear so much stuff and see so much stuff. It's unbelievable. Uh, there's there's just unbelievable killings and murder and the crimes against children tonight are just gone out the roof. And they say for every child abuse case we hear of, there's probably another ten or twenty that go unreported and nobody ever finds out about. You know, you, you hate to think the world's that bad. But according to statistics, according to the news media, uh, according to everybody who knows anything about it, it, it's very, 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 very bad. Very bad. Um, I heard about uh, a three-year-old uh, leaned over the bathtub, bleeding out of his nose where they beat him. I heard about a, a 22-month-old, I think. They cut his eyes out with a red blade. A bunch of them partying out in California. I've heard of the baby in the microwave because he's on drugs and high and didn't know what he was doing and just baked the kid for the, the, the microwaves. Can you imagine that? I, I'm telling you, the world is sick. It's bad off. There is no hope for this world. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. This The world system proves evolution can't be true. Everything goes downhill. You watch, runs down. You say, well... I got one of them that you don't have to whine, preacher. Leave it, leave it laying on the shelf for a hundred years. Come back. It ain't going to keep running. It stops. It stops. The lights burn out. The sun's burning out. Your house gets uglier with time. You get uglier with time. Everything you look at is a, is an, a testimony against evolution. These flowers did not arrange themselves. This, this pulpit did not make it. Somebody did it. Somebody put it here. Uh, everything has to have something intervening, an outside force. Your car don't get better the more you drive it. It gets worse. Your tires wire out. Your motor quits running. Uh, the world gets worse unless God intervenes. And ladies and gentlemen, He's intervened before and He's affixing to intervene again. He intervened in Noah's day. He intervened in Lot's day. He intervened in, in the day when the Lord came first time. And He is a fixing to intervene again. And the sooner the better. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Sooner the better. Sooner the better. There ain't no hope for the world. You know what the hope for the world is? The hope for the world is not integration, segregation. The hope for the world is disintegration. <laughs> Blow it to kingdom come. That's the only hope there is. And that's exactly what the Lord's going to do. You want to know what the Lord thinks about the environmental movement? Second Peter chapter 3 said He's going to melt it with a fire. He's going to burn every bit of it up. Amen? He sure is. Uh, you, you, in Lot's day, when, when Lot was in Sodom and the angels come down there to get him, the people were to the point where nothing was going to change them. We got in a, we got in a, a uh, discussion the other night after the baptism, I don't know who got that discussion started. I just jumped down, called me over and said, what you think about uh, homosexuals uh, being saved? And they said, Brother Danny, do you believe a homosexual can be saved? And of course, of course, I do believe they can. Uh, I believe the people in Romans 1 reached a point where the nation was given over to a reprobate mind and it don't necessarily apply to every individual. That's what I believe. I know preachers that don't believe that. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't fuss all day about it. One reason I know that is because I know I know men that are in the ministry right now that have been soul winners thirty years who were homosexual before they got saved. 
So the blood of Jesus can forgive that sin just like it can any other as far as I'm concerned. But, but, when a person gets involved in that type of sin, there, something happens to their mind. And if they go on and on and on, there might come a time when they can't even... Can't, it's not that God couldn't save them. It's that they can't even repent in their head and their heart. And you can get to a place like that. You can get to a place where you're, as they say, you're, you're as screwed up as a Chinese fire drill and you can't even turn to God. But it's not God's fault. It's no, it's no lack of power of the blood of Jesus or anything like that. It's the people. It's the people that's got the problem. And they were asking me about that. And I said, the Lord can forgive any sin. But when a person starts messing around, and I've heard people say, well, homosexuality ain't, is no worse than adultery. Yes, it is too. It is. A man desiring a woman is a natural desire. A woman desiring a man is not still wrong. Don't don't get don't misunderstand me. Adultery is wicked and wrong, but it's not unnatural. When a man desires another man, it's unnatural. When a man desires a child, it's unnatural. When people are with animals and kids, it's unnatural. There is a difference, and that's the sin in the Old Testament that said the land vomited out the inhabitants. He didn't say that about pride and jealousy. He said it about Sodom and Gomorrah. The land pukes it out finally. And uh, I mean, don't ever think you're better than somebody just because you haven't committed a sin they've committed. Don't ever feel like that. Don't ever look down on people. But I'm telling you, brother, there's these sins in Sodom and Gomorrah provoke God and provoke God and provoke God. So finally, he's, there was no remedy and he just burned it up. Same way in the days of Noah. They were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. No, no, for right and wrong. Just doing whatever they wanted to do. Finally, God said, this generation ain't going to repent. And if they ain't going to repent, there ain't but one answer, and that's wipe it out. Anybody want to say anything right there? Or ask a question? I opened a can of worms there, I know, but uh, I'm just telling you, you know, the conversation we have. Look, if you ask a question, that don't, we're not going to think you're like that. <laughs> okay? I mean, you can usually tell by reading around somebody. Somebody said one time, one time uh, they said, uh, somebody said to me that day, they was just kidding me, they said, Brother Danny, how long you been... So without, you know, without a wife, and I said, uh, so it'll be seven years. It's kind of on. They said, man, you're queer. <laughs> I said, shut up. Shut up. I have a lot to answer for at Judgment Day, but that ain't one of them. You, listen, if somebody do that about me, you can tell them they're lying. They're lying. Yeah, I, I don't care if you've seen a picture of me on the Internet with somebody. It's fake. That's one thing you'll never have to worry about, Brother Danny. <laughs> Uh, well, nothing happens. If they want to join, something happens. If they want to join. But now, I'm not going to look at somebody and say, Are you a queer? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't. It's just like, it's just like if somebody comes to join, I don't say, Are you a drunk? Are you a liar? You gossip? You know. Well, I don't know. we don't, the, the government don't give us no money. We don't accept no help from the government. We pay our own bills and we have a right as of now. Now I'm going to talk about that in a minute. We'll get into the discussion. We have a right as of now to refuse anybody we want to as a member. Now, now what's his name? Who's that guy? David Gibbs and all them. They say now you better have it in writing that this is your church belief and your church because Let's just say they, two lesbian women want to come and join the church and we said, sorry, you're a, you're a practicing lesbian. We can't allow you membership in our church. And they said, but we're saved and we love the Lord, uh, but, but we want to join the church. Then, of course, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. And, and if they try to sue us, if we could produce it in writing that we voted as a church, not just lesbian, we can be protected. But that's changing, I'm telling you. If the Lord don't come, did you, anybody here focus on the family today? Dr. James Dobson. Did anybody hear that? Buddy, I'm telling you, old Dr. Dobson was, he was upset. And he, he intervened from, he's somewhere, I don't know, he's in Canada or something doing something. And he called in his radio program today to say that in California, they just passed some legislature and they're sending it to old Schwarzenegger to get him to pass it, that no teacher is allowed to portray homosexuality in any kind of unfavorable light whatsoever. And there's allowed no, what they call sectarian, 
teaching in school, which would be religion. And they said that implied that sooner or later, that if you say you believe marriage is between a man and a woman, that you're teaching religion. And it's, and it's, and it's, and it's prejudiced against homosexuals. The day is coming, it's already coming in California, that if you believe that marriage is a man and a woman only, then you're accused of being prejudiced and discrimination. I mean, buddy, he was, he was upset. He told me, he said he, what did he say on it? He didn't tell me. He, he, I was listening to him. It sounded like he was talking to me. Uh, he said, uh, what did he, did anybody else hear? He said, I am, uh, he said, I'm discouraged. I'm the heartbroken. So he used that word, I believe, discouraged. And you don't ever hear James Dobson talk like that. He said, it's just a flood coming in California. But uh, to answer your question, I've never, when somebody comes and asks me to marry them, if one of them saved, one of them not saved, then I don't do it. And, you know, other situations sometimes. Huh? Yeah, well, we have bylaws, but they're just little simple things that we go by. I've always just told them, if the Bible says it, that's what we believe in. And we believe we still have the freedom to preach the Bible. But I'm going to tell you something. Oh, I've heard Ruckman say it 25 years ago. The world's getting too small for that book. Either that book must go or the world must go. And the guy said, Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> Heaven and earth will pass away, but my world will stand forever. And brother, this thing right here will stand when the world's gone. Brother? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. And, and he said, have something like that just in case. So if somebody tries to sue you, we'll have a lawyer that will go on our behalf and say, look, these people voted. But now, what's saying, what it's coming to eventually, and it'll probably start in California like everything else and work its way back this way, that a church will lose their tax exempt status if they take that stand and have to start paying taxes on their property and everything. But I'm telling you, they're going to have a fight on hands because when they start coming this way, there is thousands of Baptist churches that's going to rise up and say no. They might pull that on some of them in California, but they ain't going to get that on the Bible Belt for the most part. Anybody else right quick? We've done out of time and we've done opened up a big can of snakes. Well... That he did say that in Romans 1, but, but, be flat out honest about it, homosexuality is not the only sin mentioned in Romans 1. And it's, it's a bunch of it. Uh, just all kind of stuff. Uh, you, you can't just say that one sin will make you a reprobate and nothing else will. I guess any sin will make you a reprobate if you keep in it long enough. Uh, but we're not... We're not in no position to judge somebody being in a reprobate mind. We don't know who is and who ain't. We don't know. God can do anything. And you know, you've heard me say, as long as a person's breathing, there's hope. And that's what I choose to believe. I don't give up on nobody. I don't give up on somebody because they're a homosexual or because they're a drunk. I say, God can do anything. But there are people, like she said, their conscience gets seared. They don't even care. They have no consciousness of right or wrong. It don't even bother them anymore. But that's the way sin is. The more you commit it, the, the least it bothers you, the less it bothers you. And you know, you remember the first time you ever said a cuss word? Man, you felt awful. I remember one of the first times I ever cussed. I was like in the fourth or fifth grade. And I felt, I was scared. I was and then I tell you why, it don't bother me. And drinking, everything just like that. Anybody else want to say anything right quick? Well, God's answer is, a, is revival. What we're doing here tonight, running them buses, preaching, praying, the power of God coming down in just is the only hope this world got. That's it. People that are on the news and they're always on their own old Fox News saying, we're the good guys and Al-Qaeda is the bad guys. And I guess they are worse. But I'm telling you, brother, America ain't the good guys. America's full of bad guys. And, and girls. Guys and girls and gals. And so we need revival. We need revival. Old-fashioned camp meeting like we got coming up here in a few weeks. That's the answer for this country.
That's the answer. All right? Let's bow our head for a word of prayer.